In this video we'll make a homemade LiDAR. It's not as good as a commercial LiDAR sensor, but it will be good enough for a small robot, to avoid obstacles for example. I will show you what is a LiDAR sensor, how they work and how I've made a homemade one based on the Arduino and an infrared distance sensor. I've designed and 3D printed a case in such a way that it would spin 360 degrees without stopping. For better support it also has a bearing inside. The spin is controlled by a step motor and the LiDAR has a basic output, with values of angle and distance. We could use these values to create an obstacle map around the robot for example. I will also show you how to get better results in case that you need higher precision. So make sure that you subscribe and also to hit the notification bell in order to see future projects. Also a huge thank you to all my patrons for the support, so let's get started. If you want low cost and fast production PCBs, you might want to know about the sponsor of this video, GLC PCB. And by the way, they recently won the prize of outstanding boot at their own maker fair. You can get high quality prototyping PCBs for only $2 and they also have the SMT service available, where you could send the Gerber file together with the boom and the pick and place file and receive the boards with all the components already soldered. And that's starting for only $7. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is my homemade LiDAR sensor. And LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging System, or better Laser Imaging Detection and Ranging. And this is a device that allows you to get the distance from a laser emitter to an object or a surface using a pulsed laser beam. Well, in my case, for this homemade version, I'm using the VL53L1 sensor, which is a time of flight distance sensor. This measures the time it takes the light to get from the sensor, to hit the object and get back to the receiver, and by knowing the speed of light, we can calculate the distance between the object and the sensor. To get more information about the surroundings, the LiDAR sensor will usually also be spinning and getting the distances all around. That's why my sensor is placed on the spinning disk. As you can see here in this example, we detect the shape of the box and if I place an object inside of the box, we can also detect that object. We will see more examples at the end of the tutorial. Ok, inside of the 3D printed part, we have the so-called slip ring. This component could spin while still making connections between the wires below and above the component. In this way we can get the data from the sensor even if it's spinning all the time. To precisely rotate the disc I'm using a step motor. In this way by knowing the ratio between the pulley and the disc, we can easily calculate the angle of rotation and use that later in the code. To control this stepper motor, I have this step motor driver, and together with an Arduino Nano. The same Arduino will get the distance from the sensor, and then it will send the angle and the distance to the serial port, and we could later use that data with a small robot for example. Now to measure the distance we could use some other distance sensor as well, but this VL53L1 is one of the most precise that I have right now. But you could also use these sharp sensors, such as the 2Y0821 sensor and the 0A51SK sensor, which are both infrared light sensors, but are not based on the speed of light. For a more bulky and crude module, we could even use these ultrasonic distance sensors if you want. But that won't be a LiDAR anymore, it will be some sort of sonar because it's based on the speed of sound. There are a lot of better sensors on the market for this, but I don't have those right now. The problem with the VL53L1 sensor is that the emitted light has a big spot. That means that the precision is not good for small objects and also lost with the distance. So the received data is not that accurate, but as I said before it will be good enough for a simple robot. Ok guys, so this is all that we need for this project. The 3D printed case which you could download from below and print it with your printer. I've used PLA material. 2 parameters and 20% infill for all the parts. Then we need the VL53L1 sensor, an Arduino Nano, a step motor driver together with a step motor like this one, and the slip ring module to pass the data while spinning. This is a crucial component for the LiDAR to make a full rotation. Then we need a bearing like this one, and some drill PCB to solder all the components on it, and also some extra small parts. 
That's pretty much it for this project, see the full part list below. Now get the top part of the 3D printed case and fix in place the slip ring. Make sure that the rotating part is on the top side of the support, so it could spin at the same time as the disc. Now get the step motor and screw that in place on these two holes. Then tie the screws and make sure it fits well in place. Ok, so now I've placed some captain tape on the bearing to make it fit better. Now place that bearing on this support like this. Ok, so now we get with the spinning disc. We get these small thread insertions and using the soldering iron, I push a thread on each of these two holes for the sensor. So now we could use a 3mm screw and fix in place the sensor. So pass the wires from the slip ring through this hole of the spinning disc. Then solder 4 wires to the sensor for ground, VCC, data and clock. Now using 3mm screws, fix in place the sensor. Then I use a little bit of hot glue to place the wires inside of the disc and then we could close it like this on top of the bearing. So now it could spin and get the data from the sensor at the same time. On a drilled PCB I solder the step motor driver. We also need to add a good capacitor at the power input pins. Also connect all the wires that we need. After some tests I've decided to add a small boost converter board as well, in order to increase the 5V voltage from the USB connector to 12V for the step driver. See more about this in the schematic below. And also make sure to set the boost output at 12V. Ok, so now we have the driver in place, and also some female pins for the step motor. Solder the wires from the Arduino to the stepper driver, just as in the schematic that you can see below. We also solder the wires for power, ground, data and clock from the distance sensor. Then I've made these small holes and placed this whole sensor here. I also glue a small magnet on the rotating disc. And using this we reset the angle each rotation, so we know which is the front or the back of the sensor. See the schematic for the connections of the whole sensor as well. Ok, so now I fit the Arduino just in front of this hole here. And I fix it in place with some hot glue. You might want to make some tests before you glue everything inside. Ok, so now in the same way as before, using the small metal threads and the soldering iron, hit the thread till you can push it inside of the plastic case. For the bottom case we had 3 screws. Ok, now we could close the case. Connect the step motor to the female pins of the stepper driver. Now carefully close the case with some 3mm screws and make sure that all the wires are inside. Using a simple elastic band, I make the connection between the pulley and the rotating disc. So now on the bottom case, insert the USB connector and upload the example code. This code will rotate the disc and each several steps it will make a measurement. You can change these values here in the code in order to make more or less measurements or maybe change the range of the sensor. The lower is the range, the higher will be the precision. Right now I have it set to a maximum range with these lines here in the code. Now creating the steps for the step motor and the measurement lines in the code will take some time, so we can't really spin the disc too fast. In a future version I might try a different approach. Using a simple DC motor and a whole sensor together with a magnet to encode the position of the disc. In that way we can spin a lot faster and calculate the angle using the rotating frequency, detected with the hull sensor and the magnet. Ok, so now the code is uploaded. I connect the Arduino to a PC and open the serial monitor. As you can see we receive the angle and the distance each step. We calculate the angle in the code, because I know the pulley ratio and the steps that the motor needs to make a full rotation. So read more about this in the calculation part of the code. Now I've also made a simple application in processing that will print the distance to the screen so we can have a more visual representation of the data. As you can see we now have the real time distance around the LiDAR sensor. But now I place the sensor inside of a box. Now I run the application again. So as you can see we can detect the shape of the box. But now I also place something inside. And as you can see we also detect that object. 
If nothing is around, we'll have a circle of 800mm diameter around the sensor, because I now have it limited to that range. But you can change that in the code if you want. So this easy we can detect obstacles around the LiDAR sensor and also create a map around, using the angles and the distances we get from the serial communication. So you could use this project with any robot that you want. Ok guys, so you now know how I've made this LiDAR sensor. See the links below the video for some better distance measurement modules, because the one that I've used is not the best. You also have all the other links for electronoops.com, where you could find the schematic, the 3D printed files for the case, the full part list and the example codes that I've used. So make sure you also visit electronoops.com for more details. If you like this project, consider subscribing and also activate the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Consider supporting my work on Patreon as well. So thanks again and see you later guys.